Well, hi everybody. Take one. Bad lighting and shadow, but we're gonna do it anyway. For those just tuning in, my name is Betsy Pickens Mornex Shepherd Drews. I was born and adopted in Hollywood, California, and I found my birth family and am married. Hence the reason for all the last names. I haven't decided on one yet. Anyway, my notes are just off to the side here. The reason I'm looking just to your right, your left. Anyway. <laughs> I'm 85% deaf with genetic nerve loss. I grew up with a hearing family and went to public schools where I was regarded as slow and with many learning disabilities. I was put in special ed and 50% of the time I went in the special ed bus. Jumping ahead a bit, I started work doing PR and hosting celebrity function as early as the age of 12 because um, with genetic hearing loss you lose um, chunks of hearing throughout your lifetime. So I still had about 50% of my hearing at that age. I'm 58 years old now and I'm considered a cochlear implant um, recipient. Actually, I have been for about the last 20 years, 25 years, but it's a hard decision to make. It still is. So, anyway. I call myself lovingly <laughs> an in-betweener. Uh, I don't fit in the deaf community and I don't fit in the hearing community. So skipping ahead a bit more, I recently found work in social media. Ouch! Ow! 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 So, so skipping it. So skipping ahead a bit more. I recently found work through social media. There's no pay involved. It's all volunteer. Uh, as a PR person working for indie film through uh, GoFundMe's and things like that. I've also worked as an art model off and on in public schools. And I've worked for the Mount Me Disabled. Side note, folks, it's very difficult for a deaf person to find work. And an in-betweener like myself, it is equally as frustrating. Why? Because I wasn't raised in the deaf culture. In deaf culture, in the full deaf culture, that is, you would go to a deaf school, you'd be taught sign language, you'd be uh, given all the tools of a full deaf person. As an in-betweener like myself, going to public schools and with a hearing family, I got none of that. Um, there was nobody um, like myself with any hearing loss. I was not taught sign language. I did not have an interpreter, etc., etc. We'll get into that more in depth later. What we don't have, or what we should have, is rights to an interpreter. And when the ADA Act came along in 1990, I believe it was, Title I talked about employment. Title IV talked about telecommunication. Both of these things applied more to full death than 21-year-old me who was struggling along and I was losing more and more hearing. My hearing aids would only work for a certain amount of time and then have more loss and it stopped working. So. So relay services and interpreters were not for hearing impaired people, but full deaf. Certainly I'm not upset at full deaf people. That's not what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> I'm simply pointing out that they did not know how to help me personally, okay? the in-betweener. So during the 90s, there was CC and it was a federally funded program, but just for public service announcements at that time. Today we still struggle to get CC on YouTube, on Netflix movies. I'm sure you can think of a thousand other things if you're like me. And hospitals uh, only recently started doing the portal thing. It was right before COVID, but then all of them started up with Zoom and that sort of thing in the portal. 
or portals, I should say, for patients to doctor talking. Uh, so that, that was happening right before COVID, but now they made it more mandatory. Oops, we have to turn this back on. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> um, 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 um. So anyway, I said hospitals only recently started having patient portals. So most of my, my life, <laughs> I've not been able to talk to doctors in hospitals. I've had to have someone with me, my husband, my mother, friend, someone I haven't scared off. <laughs> um, it's been very, very difficult because they would try to give me interpreters, they would try to give me uh, telecommunication things, something I could see visually to watch sign language, but I didn't know sign language, at least not that much, very, very little. So, if you want to learn more about the ADA Act, you can go to their website at adata.org slash factsheet slash ADA overview. And they'll explain each of their titles moderately. I would say they still don't include an awful lot of what I'm talking about, and that is what needs to be changed. So that is part of my reason for this vlog. Now we're taking a break here, and I'm obviously going to edit. Um, anyway, most things for the in-betweeners are quite difficult because, like I said, you're not in the deaf community and you're not in the hearing. They don't know what to do with you. I often have to bring my husband or friend along in very private places <laughs> to a gynecologist <laughs> if I want to uh, talk about my drugs with the doctor, if I want to order something, if I want to um, talk to my bank, um, get my Sephora card renewed um, with my visa or whatever, uh, and I'm slobbering all over. <laughs> and so basically there is no privacy for someone like me, ever. <laughs> And, of course, the person has to come along with me. They'd rather not. Today I want to talk about anxiety and us in-betweeners. If you've not seen the, I guess we call it, TV series Switched at Birth, I highly recommend it. Deaf View is on Netflix now, I believe. But I have to warn you, it has lots of profanity, so maybe not for the younger one. <laughs> or yourself, <laughs> if you don't care for that. Uh, I have been labeled as that angry deaf girl for quite a while. I think I'd rather be called the frustrated and frightened deaf girl. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there's that early labeling too and prejudice against not just deaf people, but uh, people who are hearing impaired. Because that's what I like to call it, hearing impaired maybe even severely hearing impaired. Deafness is confusing to people. They don't realize it's like blindness. I guess we'll say blindness. If you took off your glasses and you couldn't read and you couldn't drive, you couldn't see what was right in front of you, would you be considered blind? I mean, if your glasses fall off, huh? like you see in the movies sometimes, horror movies especially, if somebody loses their glasses and they're desperately there's a shadow over me here. <laughs> Desperately trying to find their glasses. And if they can't find their glasses, they're in a cave or wherever, some possible situation. <laughs> then they can't see the zombie person coming at them, and they die. So you have to look at deafness that way too. There's all sorts of deafness. And there's deafness where you're full deaf since birth, there's deafness where you lose your hearing maybe at one or two. Woo, that sounds squeaky. <laughs> uh, there's genetic hearing loss, like my thing, where I lose it in chunks. Um, and I get to, I'd say my brain gets to learn and then has to relearn like every five years. <laughs> so that to me is actually the most frustrating because it's the world I've lived in. I'm not saying that other deafness is not frustrating. Obviously it is, but it's hard for me to be taken seriously because I can kind of speak clearly. 
<laughs> Not always. <laughs> so, anyway, I'm frightened most of the time. I'm anxious. No, it can be, um, I'd say, quite, quite scary at times not to be able to protect yourself. I guess that feeling of neglect and horribly misunderstood. It's hard for relationships. Doctors mainly, probably your like family physician. I'm not going to say your hearing aid doctor or your hearing doctor, but maybe. <laughs> They're really quick to label deaf people as having anxiety disorders and possibly depression, and ADHD, uh, attach, attention deficit. And perhaps that's true, to a certain extent anyway. But it is not the whole picture. So, can you imagine being labeled as that right off the bat? I mean, that would make you anxious right there. <laughs> and you'd feel anger. You'd feel the anger start to build up in you. Uh, and as you got to know yourself better, you'd realize um, it's really not anything I can help, but you're afraid to speak up because people get confused, they can get angry, and they say, oh, you're not really deaf. Uh, so yeah, my first response is to get more angry. <laughs> well, anyway, 50 to 60 percent of hearing loss in babies is due to genetic causes. Uh, sometimes the gene um, does not form correctly or in an expected manner, and mutation occurs. Nobody's fault. A mutation happens, uh, and we can know these things now. Since the um, year two, 2000, we've learned so much more about deafness. So, um, some mutations run in families. Again, nobody's fault. I'm not blaming the parents and saying, oh, it's my parents' fault because they have it too. And often other things along with it, such as autism, ADHD, allergies, and vision problems, also be stomach problems like Celtic disease. If this applies to you, you know what I'm talking about. You'll have other problems that kind of plague you the rest of your life. You'll have a lot of um, infections in your ears, or maybe infections in general. You're more prone to autoimmune diseases. It all kind of runs along that line of being a genetic disorder that goes with deafness. I went to talk to my uh, dental hygienist who said she had somebody in her family. I think it was either her daughter or her son even, who had gotten deafness at 10 and was also autistic. And they went, both parents, and they got the test and they found out that there was a deficit in the gene, in the molecular structure, uh, the DNA strand, whatever you want to call it. So I don't know about me, not yet. Despite, <laughs> oh. don't like this shadow. I'm gonna put this right up here. Uh, we're going to do better on the lighting here. But despite it not being anybody's fault, my fault, anybody's fault, I have been made to feel defensive. I often go to bed exhausted. I would say I wake up exhausted. I have a bad night's sleep, often bad dreams. I go to bed feeling guilty or sad. <laughs> not a good way to go. No. <laughs> So, during the day, I run into numerous situations, which leaves me feeling drained. And I'm probably guilty when I shouldn't. I can give you some examples. Um, I went to the grocery store the other day, and they wanted to discuss if I had my bags with me or not, if I needed one, and I couldn't hear it. And two of the girls at the encounter started actually whispering, laughing. <laughs> and I can't say for sure what they were saying, but it was very, very uncomfortable. And I could feel my heart, my breath, everything start to get a little bit out of control. And I have to take a deep breath, take it down a notch, and try not to let anybody bother me. <laughs> anyway, 
if any of this relates to you at all, stay tuned and we'll work on this together. I have an awfully annoying voice. <laughs> Very whiny. I have this device now, which I think I showed everybody, where I have an amplifier. So for the first time I can hear my own voice in a long time. And I didn't realize how whiny I am. <laughs> so, I'm really a whiny person. John will tell you that. <laughs> so, anyway, this is just an introduction, and I will get more into all of this uh, about the anxiety. We'll get more into depth. I can't even say that correctly. We'll get more into depth about this later on. So, I just wanted to introduce myself, some of the things I'll be talking about, and then we'll go from there. Uh, I appreciate everybody that has to. Uh, I appreciate everybody that has tuned in so far, and I hope you'll stay along, because this kind of applies to everybody with disabilities. We can learn together and share together, and get over our anxiety and guilt together, because we don't need this anymore. We've had enough. We've had enough of this. It's time for us to start feeling good about ourselves and good about our disabilities. Even if they are a hindrance to others, we shouldn't let it get to us so much that we have bad dreams at night and we make it feeling guilty and we face the day already feeling bad about every situation that's coming along because that is no way to live. So let's try to buckle up and go on this ride together and make it a great year because God knows we need it after last year. <laughs> so this is the Hysterical Deaf Woman signing off and hoping you have a great day. Kisses, love.